Welcome back to Red Glasses Talks. We're continuing our study on becoming a person of the Word of God, the Bible. Nothing more important after you come to know Christ than to become a person of the Word. The Word of God is powerful. It is life-changing. Now, if you don't want your life changed, if you don't make the, think the Father knows best for your life, then you're probably going to avoid everything we're talking about. But if you want to become the person God wants you to be through his son, Jesus Christ, through your study of the word of God and living it out, then this is for you. So the focus is on, uh, as we talk about becoming a person of word, how do I read the word? And there are some very unique things that we need to understand and employ if we want to get the most out of reading and studying the Bible. So, so far we've talked about we've got to read the Bible thoughtfully. We've got to read the Bible repeatedly. Today we're going to look at reading the Bible patiently. <laughs> this may be a hard one for some of us. Sometimes we want to, you know, dig in and read one verse and kind of check, check that one off, got through that. Listen, that you'll never get anything out of that. Um, so anyway, you got to read rule number three, the Bible patiently. Listen to some of these quotes. Just because you don't understand it all, don't give up. Or keep on keeping on until you hit pay dirt. Don't stop digging. We get so close to great discoveries, then we give up. So uh, a number of years ago, when I worked here in Dallas, Texas with students, uh, one day I was out jogging in the area where I live, and a buddy, uh, actually a volunteer in working with our students, ran up next to me. He was also working out, and he uh, happened to run on the cross-country team for SMU, Southern Methodist University. Uh, Chris was uh, from Australia. He was the number one cross-country guy in Australia. So here I am next to him. And I'm just cocky enough to throw out a challenge. I said, Chris, you see that stop sign up there about uh, 75 yards? I think I can beat you there. So he said, let's go. So we take off and boom, I'm, I'm pumping. I mean, I'm running. And it was a pretty close race, actually. But when we got there, I stopped and I'm going like this. And he goes on. I said, man, where are you going? He said, I'm going 20 more miles. Oh my. I think I, I think I just melted right there and they erected a, a statue that said, Tulsa died here. Unbelievable. He's going 20 more miles. So there's a lot of lessons in that. First Corinthians 9, 24. Do you remember how on a racing track, every competitor runs, but only one wins the prize? Well, you ought to run with your minds fixed on winning the prize. Every competitor in athletic events goes into serious training. Athletes will take tremendous pains for a fading crown of leaves, but our contest is for an eternal crown that will never fade. And then Paul says, I run the race then with determination. Determination. So what we're saying here is there is a vast difference between a cross-country race and a short-distance run. I was in the short-distance deal. So cross-country, you got to pace yourself, and you got to be prepared for the long haul. In the same way, we need to develop a cross-country mentality in reading the Bible. How about you? Let's get with it.